And with that application, the theory is based upon advanced biochemical programming because your programming is eventually has to turn to the biochemical aspect, which and then as the future goes on, we're going to have to dig into gene expression and all that um, based upon your program. One, go! Okay. Extension! Okay. Time! And with that application, the theory is based upon advanced biochemical programming because your programming is eventually has to turn to the biochemical aspect, which and then as the future goes on, we're going to have to dig into gene expression and all that um, based upon your programming. And there's a lot of smart people that don't know anything about athletics, but we're going to have to turn to them to, to get the ideas. Because even in molecular biology, in that field, they're actually finding out that physiologists don't have it right. So, I mean, the future of where everything goes is basically based upon science, and then you're going to have to try to apply that science. Now, the two things I, I can grasp a hold of is the intensity and the duration should be the absolute focal point and the considerations of all your training that day. And the specificity of exercise in your program is absolutely critical to that adaption. And I'll explain that thinking later. I won't spend too much time on that. Uh, I believe you've probably heard enough on adaption and specificity. Um, there's just some so basically you're saying, okay, I'm going to train with, with time. Time is very important because it increases, I'll show you what it does. It increases the density per set. If you, now, I'm not talking about the general person, and maybe you are, maybe I am if they're a competitive person, okay, but my athletes, this is what I saw with them, um, the density, the amount of time, and the intensity, the density and the intensity of the sets went up when we started training uh, uh, with time. Competitiveness, um, uh, ASFM method that I came up with training, uh, it corresponds with the dynamic correspondence of Bonder Chuck, his books are back there. Uh, the regulation of specificity in sports in regards to the energy system and the duration. So then if, for example, if I want to train a sprint swimmer for getting stronger, he's under 10 seconds. And then if I want to train him more specificity for a sport, I would actually train him over 10 seconds if he's got a uh, David Plummer who has a, uh, uh, he won the nationals last year, beat the Olympic silver medalist, uh, former world champion at nationals last year. He came out of retirement. He's hoping to make London this year, which, I mean, he should. Um, we're manipulating his times in his weight room to actually mimic what he does in the pool so that, again, he doesn't do, let's say, an aerobic set in the pool and comes and does sets under 10 seconds in my weight room, okay? Because if you time those, if you, if you work together on that, you'll get deeper into where you want to go with less energy wasted. Um, now, sets for time. Now, again, I use the undulated model, and actually I shifted it to better work with stress based upon the weekly model of how your body adapts. And, and really, if you look at like the strength athlete up there at the very top, he walks in day one, his sets are five seconds long. That day, maybe you'd be at 85%. Can you get a double or a triple in there? Probably. People ask me, well, I got a three second day. Yeah, my, my shot putters are moving some heavy weight. We're doing maybe a cluster, 92%, does a single rest, does a single rest. How do I do the, let's say RDLs? Three seconds. Can I get one in? Well, if you do an undulated RDL, so essentially you just do your RDL position, and at the bottom you undulate. I have athletes that can get 400 pounds for just undulating up and down in the bottom stretch position, six reps in three seconds. It's a lot of work, okay? And all I'm saying is you have to pick the right exercise. So the only downfall to this program is that you start to push yourself when you get to the to the extremes is of of the, the limited time is you're going to limit your type of program that you do, okay? Uh, the type, I should say, the amount of exercise you can select. Because doing a, well, as you can see, there's probably no way to do a Turkish get up in there, okay? I'll just be honest so, with you. Um, I'll give you a brief rundown. I took six athletes, uh, and, and again, I mentioned this in my book in great detail. Six athletes trained at submaximal high velocity. Basically, I trained between 25 and 50 percent. They were already strong. The coaches were like, they were, they were with me four and five years. We didn't need to make them any, uh, any stronger. I had a 180-pound walk-on goalie who could bench 285, 300. Well, all we did for 12 weeks was work with between 50 and 25%. Now, you say, that's not a lot of load. Well, 
but if you take a 150 pound bench press and you pull it down to your chest and then reverse it, if you look at the forces, you're, you're looking at six or maybe even 700 pounds at a high speed, high velocity. The, exactly what happens at the speed at which sports takes place with the stretch reflex. It's not that hard, okay? So, and they, to, my, to my astonishment, they all got stronger and faster. Even though, and now their strength levels were there. Now, if you're weak as a kitten, it's not going to work, folks. You have to be able to be strong. And basically, my triphasic, not my triphasic, but the three, three motions, eccentrically, isometric, and concentrically. Now, so here's a hex deadlift. Up, down, the athlete's pulling himself up and down with his quads. And at the top, we'll always finish with a full range of motion. Now, uh, I won't get into the... At the bottom, he's pushing and pulling. Actually, I was thinking about putting a strap or something to hold their toe so he can pull down harder during that time. You might want to get a little bit more movement now, but at the top, as he's going up and down, he's pulling with his hamstring, or pulling with his hamstring, yes, and, and pushing with his quad, so his feet's pushing and pulling. You should see my track athletes do this. Unbelievable how fast they go. Now, let's get sports uh, specific on a biomechanical aspects. Distance runners? 800 meter runners, majority of their time is spent in the top range of motion. You would want this top range of motion for them. Most of your sports with acceleration, you would actually want the bottom range of motion because that's where they spend most of their time, especially your football lineman is an acceleration versus top end speed, okay? So you're basically just breaking up how much time they spend at, at both. So your football lineman, you may do 10 seconds at the bottom position up and down and trust me, that, that hurts when you do it right. Then your distance runner may be at the top, and your DB or your linebacker may be at both. He may do five at the bottom, five at the top, because he accelerates and he runs at top end speed. Okay. One consideration you have to have is, for sports specificity, this is uh, Ischern's, Valdemir Ischern. There's uh, books in the back there, too. The, Aerobic capacity residual. So aerobic capacity, 30 days. Um, you can see maximal strength is right around 30 days. Now, now people have a hard time with this. And you have to realize that, again, maximal strength is still a skill. So people say, if I don't bench for 30 days, it goes down if I don't squat. All right, yes, your squat got, has gone down. Okay, my athletes that uh, are running, let's say they're, they're also including in running, but during the course of the season, we may name back squat for a period of time, but their back squat, their back squat went down, but they did not get weaker. If you tested their muscles in some other way, the strength's still there. They just lost the skill of back squatting. So don't think that you have gotten weaker, okay? On a 30 days, you won't. You'll keep some residual. Um, aerobic glycolysis strength, maximal speed is about five days. This is the most important skill for all of sports. Maximal speed is, is the most effective thing. That's what wins, okay? Wins games. And uh, you need to buy that or, or develop it, however you want to do it. And the, or recruit it. Any college coaches here, make sure you recruit fast kids. Um, improve intermuscular actions, motor control. But these are the residuals. This is one consideration you need to, to have in your training program. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, they, this is a Monday for six weeks. So this would be done, the first slot would be done one day. This is my program. This is an actual program from two years ago. Um, this is basically my program on Monday for two weeks. The next one is Monday for weeks three and four, Monday for th five and six. And essentially, you can keep the same exercises. And I'll give a little credit to uh, Giles Cometti, French contrast uh, researcher. This is one of the most effective methods I ever think. Thanks for watching this highlight clip. If you want to watch this entire presentation, head over to strengthcoachnetwork.com and for a dollar, you can try out the whole site for 24 hours, no strings attached, and get access to this presentation and hundreds more just like it.